we hold it until Well, hopefully they'll be here at the next one. So, we're all set? Um, I believe so. Let me just see here. Oh, here we go. I think he got in. Oh. Are you in? No. Did you? Yeah, because I just changed your password. Oh. Okay, but he's not sure of his username either. Jay Vanderleest. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jay Vanderleest. <laughs> okay, it's on You know how to spell that. Yep. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know, I don't. Okay, put that in. Just the one. Yep, one, yeah, one, two, three. Is that your chair? Oh, no, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. May I? Sure. For the perfection of policy for uh, March 25th, 2019 is now in session. Hear you, hear you. I'll take a motion to approve our agenda. Motion to approve. Roll call. Ro yeah. Yep, motion. Roll, roll call. Roll call. call. You did that again? Yeah. Roll window. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scroll down too fast. Yeah, uh, before the okay, before the agenda. Roll call. Uh, let's see who's here. Alder Stevens. Here. Alder Vanderlees. Here. Alder Stoyer? Here. And I, Alder Scandal, is also present. Okay. Now I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion approved by Alder Vanderleest. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. I'll take a motion to approve our minutes from March 11th, 2019 Wait, protection Randy, policy hold on. meeting. Hold on. Alder, hold on. Okay. It's okay. Who, mo who moved and seconded the motion to approve the agenda? Uh, Alder Vanderleest made the motion. Alder Stevens seconded. Okay. Sawyer thirded it. And then vote. This is unanimous. Thank you. Th this is my 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 laptop died, yeah. so this is a loner and it's older, so it's taking a little bit of time. Well, I think we should always blame IT. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. By, moved by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have our minutes. Uh, on to a regular business. Number one, discussion with possible action on an ordinance amending and creating sections of Chapter 24, Green Bay Municipal Code, relating to Fire Prevention Code. Staff? Uh, we would defer to the uh, Chief of uh, the Fire Department, who is here in attendance. Um, I did work on drafting this, so if you have any specific questions about that, but it was at their direction, um, so I can let him speak to those changes. Chief? <coughs> I take it you're, you're the one who... Uh, Good evening, everybody. Yep. Good evening. Actually, Joe, uh, Joe Grant Gabe, our fire marshal, who's uh, in charge of that division, who runs our code enforcement uh, for the fire department as well, inspections and things of that nature. But essentially, every um, 
the six years, the International Fire Code is updated and revised. And that is, and the, the way that we can adopt that is through the state. Um, so they are, we're in 2019, we're adopting the 2015 code, but the state is kind of that far behind, like an adoption process. So we're asking you to adopt the amended or 2015 code um, with a document that you see before you with a few um, amendments to that. Most notably, notably would be the last uh, couple pages uh, in regards to fire pits. So we have some very specific um, things that we want to up in there for recreational fire, fires, cooking fires, and fire pits um, themselves. Um, undoubtedly, the most complaints we get on an annual basis would be for people that are outside having recreational fires. Right. Yeah. Um, probably 10 to 15 complaints a year at least. So we have tried to document in, in the requirements before you um, measures that allow people to um, enjoy an outside recreational fire pit, yet not create a nuisance for their neighbors. And so um, you'll see that for an in-ground fire pit, so people will build them with concrete block and yard, you know, the yard blocks and so forth. They have to be 25 feet away from any structure. Um, that's because those do not have spark arresters on them. Okay, so people are burning their, their wood in the pit and sometimes you get sparks off of that depending on what kind of wood you have and they can travel and they can go to a structure and they can cause a fire. So 25 feet is kind of the accepted distance between the pit itself and, and, a, uh, and another building. Down further you'll see that portable, portable fire pits only requirement is only 15 feet because those are required to be UL listed. And all of those come with spark arresters or um, essentially a screen that goes over the fire. So that keeps the sparks in place. Now you will see some that are built um, that don't have those spark arresters. And those would fall under the 25 foot then requirement. So that's the difference between the two so that you understand and if your constituents are asking you what's the difference, that's really the difference in the thing. And then finally, the last clause in there gives me the ability to ban um, any of this going on depending on weather conditions and things of that nature. We've had a situation uh, in the city over the last several summers where we've had an ongoing uh, dispute between neighbors uh, where a, a citizen had, has asthma and the individual next to them was burning and, and, and the smoke was going into her home and creating a health hazard for her and uh, essentially I had to shut that down. I had to tell that individual that he couldn't burn because it was a health hazard and so it kind of gives us a little bit of leeway you know, in that regard, not trying to infringe on anybody's rights, um, but yet keep everybody healthy as well. So, we'll have to talk to you later. I think I'm like, no, is that on the west side? Uh, no, actually, it's not. Oh, really? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I won't go into any specifics on it. <laughs> um, but it, uh, it, you know, and if there are other you know situations that arise out there, our, our you know our fire inspectors are real good about handling those things and explaining this whole process to people. Um, but you know, literally, it gives you know some direction, some discretion to us in those circumstances. You know, you're also adopting the state. You'll see in there the uh, ATCP 93. So what that is, that's this document right here. Big document, again, it's the Agricultural Trade and Consumer Protection Code issued by the state that has to do with flamm flammable liquids and tanks and things of that nature. So it's re referencing what you're uh, approving is this document. So you can certainly read through it if you'd like. It's pretty boring, but uh, unless you're in the fire business like we are. And then the International Fire Code, this is one half of it. So um, all of the codes that go into new construction, uh, means of aggress and emergency lighting and fire extinguishers, sprinklers and hood systems and all the things that we um, are reviewing uh, as we're out doing inspections and when we're reviewing new plans uh, for uh, construction in the city. So I have the other half here if you'd like to take a look at that. Trust well. me, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, that's what we're asking you to do. I don't do. have a burning mm -hmm. desire to. We are, uh, I guess the other things we should cover real quick is we are asking that the uh, fine, fine, fine amounts increase uh, from 500 to 1,000 and from, um, and in yeah, the second section there, we're dropping it from 500 to 250. Um, and then section two of that would be a thousand plus cost. So that means well, if we have to get into court, uh, we're finding somebody, we're going to court, and we have to have attorneys go there and so forth, mm -hmm. and we're going to recover. If we write a violation, then it's a judge so orders, and we recover our costs and things as well. So and that correlates with our inspe regular inspectors, <coughs> the housing and building as well. So it kind of 
fits more in line with them. And then one other thing to achieve is the uh, reinspection fee is going up from thirty dollars to fifty. To fifty, and that brings us into line with Alloway. We protect the village of Alloway as the fire department itself, so we're just bringing those two things in uh, into line with each other. We did exactly the same thing with the ambulance rates. You'll remember we raised the ambulance rates uh, maybe six months ago. Um, and, uh, Alloway's rates were lower uh, than our rates, so I went to their city council and, and asked them to raise their rates up so that they were exactly the same, uh, and they did so as well. So uh, trying to align our service uh, area you know, with the same kind of uh, costs incurred. You had some questions? I got a few comments. Thanks, Chief, for coming in. Sure. Uh, on page two, I just noticed in section four, you know, when to be issued, and it seems to be the discretion of the chief. And you had about six or five items that were deleted. So is that, that's it, is, is it important to delineate here, or is this just to be understood? You know, that it's up to the discretion of the chief to, you see section four, section 24.06? Yep. You just there were uh, there there had been when to be issued. There was number one, and then there were five descriptions below it, and those are all crossed off. And it says more or less to the discretion of the chief. So I'm just wondering is 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 it an important is it important to delineate on this document, or is it just to be understood? I think all those circumstances, if I remember right, are now cold covered. Fire yeah, and when we were discussing it, there was only, like you said, uh, all there are only five listed here. There's so many oh. dangerous and hazardous conditions that it okay. was, I mean, to point well, out five of them was a little arbitrary, so we just deleted that and then allowed just any dangerous or hazardous conditions as determined by the fire department. So you'll, we leave it to them. Okay. And we really, we don't just, I mean, that's not kind of, I mean, it really is in line with what's in the International Fire Code. You know, this code's a minimum code. It's born out of um, problems. You know, when we have major fires, the code gets updated, things that have happened, whatever. So this is really, it's not a maximum standard, it's considered a minimum standard in the world. It's the International Fire Code. That's every how many years? That's um, I believe it's coming out every three years, but okay. the, the state only uh, adopts every six. Uh, that's the, the path that they've chosen, and under their, under state law, we, we, can, only, we can only adopt what they're adopting. Um, so that's why we're before you here asking for the sixth year update from the 2009 to the 2015. Okay. And hopefully to alleviate, sorry to interrupt oh, you, but ahead. to hopefully alleviate some of this in the future, we did add that the most current edition and any subsequent editions as amended from time to time shall be then incorporated okay. in this ordinance so that hopefully we don't have to come back every you know, three years right. or whatever. Well, come okay. on. Get the band together every <laughs> three years. Come on. All right. On section six on page three, it just uh, talks about that a person with a violation would have 14 days to correct the defi deficiencies. Uh, are there extensions ever given to this, or is that considered a safety issue? You know what might it, it depends on on, on, on the issue. It is. if, it's, if it's considered immediately dangerous to life and life and health, we, we order it to be immediately uh, immediately remedied, immediately. Okay. Right. Um, we typically give them 14 days to comply. Now, if there is extenuating circumstances, um, they certainly can ask for uh, an extension okay. of that and. We tell you that probably 99.9% .9 of the time they're granted. Okay. Um, right. Some of the issues we run into though is when you, if you've given them 30 days and then you go back in 30 days and like, oh, I need a 30, 30 more days, mm -hmm. you know, that kind they of thing. So they can try to perpetuate things. And really, we don't have enough staff to continually be going back to these, you know, facilities. I think we're doing somewhere around 5,000 inspections uh, every year, and then every one of those inspections generally. Sometimes, well, not, I shouldn't say all of them, but probably 40% of them generate a second inspection and, and then another 25, a third inspection. Um, so uh, we okay. expect people to comply all right. as long <laughs> when as they can. It's like, I'm sure it's, there's it's stuff like exit lights are out. All right, right, we'll change the bulb. Or if it's an LED one, put a new, you got to put a new sign up if it's an right. LED one. Um, fire extinguishers being out of compliance. I mean, those are the kind of common things like people using extension cords. Uh, people blocking exits or blocking the electrical equipment, right. um, okay. stuff like that are really the common things that we run into. It's just kind of common sense things that we point out okay. to them. Uh, All so right. Well, that's good. A uh, couple more. Just yeah, a yeah, more go sorry. ahead. Whatever. Uh, okay, on page uh, four, under section nine, you know, the one that has been added, quite a bit has been added. Yep. Um, when you're talking about the fire pits, the 25-foot setback, I think one of the issues that you know some of us have in our districts, you know, especially in the central city, 
is the, are the small yards. So the, the 25 foot setback is that did that change from 30 down to 25 now, or was there was there a different number recently? I think it's always been. Has it all been always, always, always been 25? Been 25. Yep. From any structure, show like this is a fence. This is what we're considering a permanent pit. So this is oh, the kind of okay. going to be concrete. Um, or you know the, the uh, landscaping blocks that people use to build these things. Now you can buy the kids in Menards and right. the Depot and all the other places. But in the past, um, there were portable pits where people would move them yeah. around the yard. Portable, portable pits are 15. Feet. Right, I understand. Okay. But I'm just looking at the setback. You know, the setback that's always been defined. Yep. Especially in small yards. I mean, there's a lot of times they don't have the room. And then they'll have to go to the portable device with the spark arresters on there. Okay. Or as long as there's or, something to cover that. Or if they put in a permanent one and they have a spark arrestor ma manufactured to cover that or they have because like, like Menards does do that um, we would consider that under the 15 foot so the spark arrestor would be 15 yep. yeah okay mm -hmm. well, that's good uh, maybe one more um, I don't know if I, I read over some of this stuff but this, this anything with fireworks at all in here or is that that's not uh, listed we're, we'll deal with that in another fireworks another time. is covered completely in this book right, right okay and then we'll do we'll deal with that at another time um, one other point on the last page, you were talking about burning. You know, it's prohibited when the wind is in excess of 10 miles per hour. Yep. Uh, does that seem to be hard to enforce, something like that? I mean, uh, No, because really what we're talking about there is, is, is really the nuisance complaints when people are complaining about calls smoke blowing into their yard. Um, okay. You know, when, you, when we get a, you know, a very high humidity day when, you know, you do, like, it feels like you're breathing cheese, so to speak, um, you know, when the smoke's holding to the ground. Those are times when we get complaints. We get complaints when the winds are high and it's blowing across a lot lines into other people's sure. backyards. You may be trying to sit outside and don't want to smell the smoke. Okay. Um, so 10 miles an hour is kind of a kind of apple. We checked Appleton and Oshkosh and Union National. That's kind of like the that's the standard. That's number. All right, I'm good. Thanks. Can I get a coat, uh, smoke catcher? <laughs> uh, just two questions, Chief. I have is one. Uh, anything in this uh, that? Uh, you're concerned about anything we should? I wouldn't be before you if, it were, if there were. Okay, that's what I thought. And just want to double check. And then lastly, uh, when changes are made, how is the public informed on this? Well, we can, we'll advertise all these changes. Um, the fact that the new code was adopted and then especially the fire pit thing, like I said, it's probably one of the things that generates the most uh, constituent concerns or mm -hmm. questions. Uh, we'll make sure that it gets up on uh, not only the city's website, but our, web, our, our Facebook page, our fire department website. And we'll advertise it clearly after you've adopted it at the council. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Thanks, Chief. And of course, motion Steve's to approve by Alder Vandalis. Well. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Awesome. Imagine that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Chief. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. On to item two, possible action on an ordinance creating section 27.405, Green Bay Municipal Code, creates possession of tobacco and vapor products by minors prohibited. Staff? Uh, sure, so we drafted this uh, ordinance at the request of Alder Scantel. Um, it's modeled primarily off of an ordinance drafted by uh, the city attorney in Mina. Um, which has been used, I've noticed, to um, in Swamico and some other of the surrounding areas. I think Appleton used a similar one. Um, you know, we tweaked it a little bit just to fit um, fit our our city. Um, the notably, for your reference, there is no penalty listed in this ordinance. It would default to the general penalty <laughs> section, which is a one to a five hundred dollar fine. Um, and then it is going to be in the section um, related to juveniles because again, it's, it's prohibiting minors from possessing these products. Yep. Um, and then it also prohibits retailers from selling to minors, which again, all their scandal we discussed. So yeah. um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Yep, I think this is, this is uh, pretty good. Uh, there was just, uh, was brought up earlier today, and I was wondering, uh, this is mostly for the sale, right? We're not really going after the minors, ticketing minors with this? Uh, no, it would be possession or use. Um, we could ticket minors, and we could also ticket the retailers for selling to them. Okay. Where is that listed as far as the fine? Uh, it's not. It was it's just not. It's the general just under, section. Right. right. It's just. That's in 27.901. So it's a separate section that discusses the general penalty, and that applies to all of Chapter 27. Okay, so that. 
one to five hundred, I think, is sufficient. Yeah. Okay. And as always, the police department, you know, and I don't know if um, the police department wants to speak to that, but they can always use their discretion and issue warnings. Um, you know, how as this gets into transition, but that's kind of up to them. Okay. Hey, anything? Uh, well, we agree with the law department. Um, like she said, normally underage tobacco products is not something we actively go out and ticket if we have issues or problems with it. Um, in certain areas or with certain sets of juveniles, normally we do give warnings at first. Um, so it's not like we'd be going out writing tickets left and right. Um, it does help us because in terms of testing a vape for tobacco, there is no presumptive test that is on the market to be able to test it to know if it has tobacco products. So th that's why we like that it encompasses <laughs> all vape. Yep. Motion approved. Motion approved by Alder Stevens. Second. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay. On to three. Discussion with possible action on request by Alder Burnett. Which reads, for the city of, to develop a resolution or policy and procedure to notify property owners near parcels of land with a pending or approved application to be transferred from fee to trust status. My overreaching concern is for the city and the United Nation in goodwill to notify affected property owners of the new governing jurisdiction, code enforcement, and zoning authority of the parcel recently transferred or applied to be transferred and to provide, provide an official form for public input and comment. Um, Alder Burnett, I spoke with him. He could not be here today, and he would like us to just hold this item. So, motion to hold. Motion to hold by Alder Sawyer. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're holding that item. Uh, discussion was possible. Oh. Well, yep, yep, yep. Discussion with possible action and request by Alder Dorf, which reads, I believe that steps must be taken to ensure that infrastructure projects, including but not limited to those that the wheel tax will fund, must be chosen very carefully and be placed into a capital improvement plan. I'm requesting that P and P, uh, that's us, develop policy with the help of DPW, legal and other appropriate staff. This policy must be developed so that the special interests and requests of individual alders do not subvert the process of choosing the projects that have been carefully researched by city staff as being appropriate for placement in a five-year plan. Parameters for choosing streets to be repaired, reconstructed or resurfaced, as well as other infrastructure improvements should be clearly identified within this policy. And again, uh, I spoke with Alder Dorf, and she could not be here, and she's asked us to hold this item. So, motion to hold by Alder Stevens, second by Alder Vanderleest. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is being held. We are on to the informational. Oh, well, wait, 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 wait. I'll slow down. There we go. Uh, liquor violation report from the police department for March 25th in the year of our Lord, 2019. Uh, we have no violations. No violations. Motion to receive in place of file. Motion to receive in place of file by Elder Stoyer. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. And? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Stoyer. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I guess we're done. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Now, you want to make sure you... Leave the meeting. Do I go to that extra here? Uh, so you go back to go back agenda. agenda. Hit agenda.